So, what do the numbers of the U.S. Census tell us? Ron Gochez is an activist and community organizer. He joins us now from our Los Angeles studio. Ron, as far as these numbers go, there's a new congressional map that's been drawn up as a result of these census numbers. Um, we're showing right now states that will gain seats uh, and states that will lose seats. Now, in terms of some of the winners, uh, we're looking at states like Nevada, Utah, Washington, Arizona, Texas, Georgia, South Carolina, and Florida. All of these states uh, have large Hispanic populations. I'm wondering if you think political leaders actually have a handle on what these numbers are telling us in terms of Hispanics in America. You know, they better have a handle on it because we know that in 2008, you know, in the nomination of a President Barack Obama, we saw that many of the states that you just mentioned were won simply because of the Latino vote. You know, in states uh, and across the country, you know, over 60, nearly 70 percent of the Latino vote went to President Barack Obama. So I think that uh, the powers that be understand this and understand that, like was mentioned, you know, right now there are over 15 million American citizens who are uh, Latinos who aren't even 18 yet. So they understand in the very near future we're going to be uh, right now we're a large uh, part of the electorate but we're going to be a gigantic part of it in the very near future so I think that the politicians have to see that respect that and that's why you see now even the Republicans trying to cater for to the Latino vote. Ron I want to draw on a little bit of history here I mean we talk about this changing landscape and some say you know we've seen this before with the Irish the Italians but others say no something's different here they say Hispanics are here but choose to remain culturally separate. Instead of learning English, Americans are learning Spanish. Instead of seeking to blend in, they're choosing to stand out. I want to get your take on this. Do you agree? Oh, I think that the difference here is historical and it's tied to the land. You know, as indigenous people, or now, you know, maybe people don't call us indigenous, they call us Latinos or Hispanics, there is a tie to the land. And we've been here since before this was even America. So there's a reason why culturally, uh, you know, some people are trying to force us to change, but we, we know that we are in a place where we've been for thousands of years. So it's going to be very difficult for us to give up our roots, to give up our culture. And I think, you know, mainstream America is going to have to understand that. And I think both political parties, if they want to continue to try to get uh, the vote of our community are going to have to understand that. And I think that our community is seeing that historically, like you mentioned, uh, you know, both parties really have not um have, have not done anything for our communities that is positive. I think both parties are trying to convince us that they are, uh, the Democrats in particular, uh, but when we look at it historically, especially on, on issues like immigration, uh, the Democratic Party has been just as tough on our community, if not tougher, than the Republicans. So I think our community, uh, because of the long history that we have here, you know, we know this history, and I think that for example, in, in this past November's elections, you know, millions of the same Latinos who voted for Obama in 2008 didn't vote again. They stayed home because they're, our community is sick and tired of the promises of the Democratic Party. Uh, and it's because they haven't come through on immigration and on many other issues, Latinos are realizing that the, Dem the Democrats, just the Republicans, are not acting in our best interest. Uh, you know, you talk about holding on to your roots uh, and yet wanting to become Americans. I'm wondering, um, you know, do you think that in the future, if numbers like this continue to happen uh, in terms of the growth of population of the Hispanic communities, uh, do you think we're going to see, I don't know, in 10, 15 years, American football teams with jerseys with the names Lopez and Gonzalez on the back? Or will the Latino community continue, um, you know, when it comes to athletics, focusing on that football? Well, if you look at Mark Sanchez and the Jets, they're doing great. And if you look at other football players and other athletes across in different sports, uh, you know, we are part of every every sector in American society and all you know no matter how much some people may hate that that's a reality and we're going to continue to be and we're you know the numbers show that we're a growing part of uh, you know of this country so politically it should make no difference uh, the only difference that that we want as community organizers is that you know we simply don't want more Latino politicians to become Republicans or Democrats who in, in the long term don't do anything for our community. We have enough of those type of politicians. What we need is to become a political force that's independent of the Democrats and the Republicans that can truly act in the best interests of our communities. Because we're tired of the being made, uh, being told these promises, and then you know, under the current Obama administration, they have detained and arrested more Latinos than any other administration in U.S. history. So that is not why we give our votes to the Democratic Party. That's why we have to realize our political potential, and that's why we have to organize our communities 
communities and all working class communities to organize a party that's separate from the two party system that like I said really can uh, act in the best interest of a working class people including Latinos and anyone else. I think it's an important point you brought up uh, that in 2010 a lot of Hispanics stayed home uh, didn't vote in these midterm elections. But I'm wondering if you think, I mean, there are a lot of people who still just can't imagine the idea of a large portion of the Hispanic community turning over to the Republican side. And yet, we saw just this week, uh, you know, George W. Bush, uh, his brother Jeb, heading up a new organization specifically designed to include and recruit Hispanics uh, to the Republican Party. Do you think this will work? Uh, absolutely not. You know, I think that... For us in our political analysis, we, we realize that the, the Democratic Party represents the right wing in this country and the Republicans represent the far right wing in this country. So really both parties do not represent our interests, but both parties are trying to get our votes. So you know when you have today's the Republican Party and you know the little brother and sisters of uh, the Tea Party, uh, this is something that Latino are, are not we're not gonna fall for that kind of a trick. Ron, we I wanna have get in here real quick with the Democrats for a long time. But we, we, we are no longer going to continue to do that. We're almost out of time, but I have a, a question that we often talk about here at RT. Uh, with this movement, the immigration movement, the rising population in the Hispanic community, who will be the leader? Because right now, um, I have yet to see anyone kind of stepping up to lead this charge. Um, if you're talking about a specific individual, I hope, it, I hope it's never going to be that type of movement because what we've seen historically is that when there is one person that comes up like that, they're always co-opted or bought out or assassinated in many cases, like Martin Luther King Jr. In a couple of days, we're going to recognize his holiday. All so right, you I know what, we're going to have to stop there. The communities there. are going to have to organize, not just one person. All right, Ron Gochez, activist and community organizer, joining us from Los Angeles.